my hero. That's who I chase. Now, when I was 15 years old, I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, I gotta think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later, this person comes up and says, who's your hero? I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. So I turned 25, 10 years later. That same person comes to me and goes, so are you a hero? And I was like, not even close. No, no, no. She said, why? I said, because my hero is me at 35. So you see, every day, every week, every month, and every year of my life, my hero's always 10 years away. I'm never gonna be my hero. I'm not gonna attain that. I know I'm not, and that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. Define success for yourself. Define success for yourself. Now check this out. I'm in uh, south of New Orleans uh, a few years ago, and I went to a voodoo shop. Uh, and they had this, this, this wooden partition against the wall of these columns. And, and in these columns were all these vials of these magic potions, right? And the headings above each potion defining what they would give you were things like fertility, health, uh, family, legal health, energy, forgiveness, money. <laughs> Guess which column was empty? Money. <laughs> Let's admit it. Money is king today. It's what make the world, makes the world go round. It is success. The more we have, the more successful we are, right? Now I would argue that our cultural values have even been financialized, financialized. Uh, Humility is not in vogue anymore. It's too passive. It's a get rich quick on the internet, riches 15 minutes of fame world that we live in, and we see it every day. But we all want to succeed, right? So the question that we got to ask ourselves is what success is to us what success is to you is it more money that's fine i got nothing against money maybe it's a healthy family maybe it's a happy marriage maybe it's to help others to be famous to be spiritually sound to leave the world a little bit better place than you found it continue to ask yourself that question now your answer may change over time and that's fine but do yourself this favor whatever your answer is don't choose anything that will jeopardize your soul. Prioritize who you are, who you want to be, and don't spend time with anything that antagonizes your character. Be brave, take the hill, but first answer that question, what's my hill? So, me, how do I, fi how do I define success? For me, myself. Well, for me, it's a measurement of, uh, of five things. We got fatherhood. We got being a good husband. We got my health, mind, body, and spirit. We got career, and we got friendships. These are what's important to me in my life right now. So I try to measure these five things each day. I check in with them. I, I like to see whether or not I'm in the, uh, the, the debit section or the credit section with each one. Am I in the, in the red or am I in the black? You follow? For instance, sometimes say my career is rolling. All right, it's way up here in the black, but I see how my relationship with my wife Maybe you could use a little bit more of my attention. I got to pick up the slack on being a better husband. Get that one out of the red. Or say my spiritual health could use some maintenance. It's down here, but hey man, my friendships and my social life, they're in high gear, right? I got to recalibrate, checks and balances. I got to go to church, remember to say thank you more often, something. But I got to take the tally because I want to keep all five in healthy shape. And I know that if I don't take care of them, if I don't keep up maintenance on them, one of them is gonna get weak, man. It's gonna dip too deep into the debit section. It's gonna go bankrupt. It's gonna get sick, die even. So first, we have to define success for ourselves. And then we have to put in the work to maintain it. Take that daily tally, tend our garden, keep the things that are important to us in good shape. I mean, let, let, let's admit it. We've all got two wolves in us, a good one and a bad one. And they both want to eat. The best I can tell, we just got to feed that good one a little more than the other one. Process of elimination is the first step to our identity, AKA where you are not is as important as where you are. It is just as important where we are not as it is where we are. 
Look, the first step that leads to our identity in life is usually not, I know who I am, I know who I am. That's not the first step. The first step is usually, I know who I am not. Process of elimination. Defining ourselves by what we are not is the first step that leads us to really knowing who we are. You know that group of friends that you hang out with that they really might not bring out the best in you? You know, they, they gossip too much or they're kind of shady. They really aren't going to be there for you in a pinch. Or how about that bar that we keep going to that we always seem to have the worst hangover from? Or that computer screen, right? That computer screen that keeps giving us an excuse not to get out of the house and engage with the world and get some real human interaction. Or how about that food that we keep eating, the stuff that tastes so good going down and makes us feel like crap the next week when we feel lethargic and we keep putting on weight? Well, those people, those places, those things, stop giving them your time and energy. Just don't go there. I mean, put them down. And when you do this, when you do put them down, when you quit going there, and you quit giving them your time, you inadvertently find yourself spending more time and in more places that are healthy for you, that bring you more joy. Why? Because you just eliminated the who's, the where's, the what's, and the when's that were keeping you from your identity. Look, trust me, too many options, <laughs> I promise you, too many options will make a tyrant of us all. All right, so get rid of the excess, the wasted time. Decrease your options. And if you do this, you will have accidentally, almost innocently, put in front of you what is important to you by process of elimination. Knowing who we are is hard. It's hard. So give yourself a break. Eliminate who you are not first, and you're going to find yourself where you need to be. Don't leave crumbs <laughs> and the beauty of delayed gratification. So what are crumbs? Well, the crumbs I'm talking about are the choices that we make that make us have to look over our shoulder in the future. They come in the form of regret, guilt, and remorse. You leave crumbs today, they will cause you more stress tomorrow. And they disallow you from creating a customized future in which you do not have to look over your shoulder. So let's flip the script. Instead of creating outcomes that take from us, let's create more outcomes that pay us back, fill us up, keep your fire lit, turn you on for the most amount of time in your future. Do yourself a favor. Make the choices, the purchases today that pay you back tomorrow. Residuals. In my business, we call it mailbox money. If I do my job well today, and that movie keeps rerunning on TV, five years from now, I'm getting checks in the mailbox. It's a heck of a deal. So whether it's prepping the coffee maker the night before, so all you gotta do is press the button in the morning, or getting ready for the job interview early so you don't have to cram the night before, get some ROI. You know what that is? Return on investment, your investment, you. Customize your future, don't leave crumbs. See, happiness, happiness demands a certain outcome. It is result reliant. And I say if happiness is what you're after, then you're gonna be let down frequently and you're gonna be unhappy much of your time. Joy, though, joy is a different thing. It's something else. Joy is not a choice. It's not a response to some result. It's a constant. Joy is the feeling that we have from doing what we are fashioned to do, no matter the outcome. Now, personally, as an actor, I started enjoying my work and literally being more happy when I stopped trying to make the daily labor a means to a certain end. For example, uh, I need this film to be a box office success. You know, I need my performance to be acknowledged. I, I need the respect of my peers. Right, all of those are reasonable aspirations, but the truth is, as soon as the work, the daily making of the movie, the doing of the deed became the reward in itself for me, I got more box office, more accolades and respect than I ever had before. 
See, joy is always in process. It's under construction. It is in constant approach, alive and well in the doing of what we're fashioned to do and enjoying it. Now, the easiest way to dissect success is through gratitude. Giving thanks for that which we do have, for what is working. Appreciating the simple things we sometimes take for granted. We give thanks for these things and that gratitude reciprocates, creating more to be thankful for. It's really simple and it works. Now I'm not saying be in denial of your failures. No, we can learn from them too, but only if we look at them constructively as a means to reveal what we are good at, what we can get better at, what we do succeed at. And since we are the architects of our own lives, Let's study the habits, the practices, the routines that we have that lead to and feed our success, our joy, our honest pain, our laughter, our earned tears. Let's dissect that and give thanks for those things. And when we do that, guess what happens? We get better at them.